Hey everybody, I'm Matt with Halloween Daily News. Welcome to the Halloween Show. It's episode 19 for Friday, February 19th, 2021. And this is a landmark episode because we've got Michael Myers himself on the show today. But first, here are this week's headlines. The annual Halloween and Party Expo took place completely online this year, held virtually January 19th, 20th, and 21st. According to figures released this week, the 2021 virtual experience hosted more than 4,500 industry connections, launched as the first ever fully virtual Halloween industry trade show. This new interactive online platform delivered a lot of the valuable aspects of the in-person experience in order to foster new business opportunities and connect exhibitors and retailers from the comfort and safety of their own homes, stores, or offices. Along with returning businesses who typically attend the Halloween and Party Expo without the constraints of travel and geography, this year's virtual event welcomed 34% new buyers and allowed retailers from across the world to come together with leading suppliers to discover new products, place orders, attend live product demonstrations, network with each other, and attend retail education events. Through advanced algorithms and matching software, the platform was able to provide 53,500 recommendations to connect buyers and exhibitors based on their profiles and product categories they were searching for and offering. This led to 15,000 new leads, 13,000 chats and messages, and 4,500 connections between buyers and exhibitors, plus more than 1,000 one-to-one meetings within the platform and more taking place following the event between exhibitors and attendees. With plans to resume as an in-person event next year, the 2022 dates and location will be announced in the coming weeks. More new Halloween toys begging for residence on your collector's shelf. Marvel's WandaVision premiered its highly anticipated all-new Halloween spooktacular episode last week, and now Funko has unveiled new Billy and Tommy Funko Pop vinyl figures from the episode. These new WandaVision Halloween pop figures join the previously unveiled Halloween Wanda and Halloween Vision pop vinyl figures, featuring the characters holding trick-or-treat pumpkin pails and dressed in their classic comic book costumes. And now Billy and Tommy, Wanda's twins from the show, join the Funko Pop lineup. Funko announced the Billy and Tommy Halloween 2-pack this week as an early Virtual Con Spring 2021 reveal. Full details on how you can score this limited edition release can be found at Funko.com. WandaVision's all-new Halloween Spooktacular episode premiered on February 15th on Disney+. The new independent Halloween horror film Bad Candy is on its way later this year, and a number of new stills from the film have recently been released online, teasing the colorful and bloody fun to come. The film follows local Halloween stories of both myth and lessons learned in the community of New Salem. With its annual Psychotronic FM Halloween show, reenactment radio DJs Chilly Billy and Paul weave tales of the supernatural from years gone by. The film stars Zach Galligan of Gremlins and Slipknot frontman Corey Taylor, along with Derek Russo of Jumanji The Next Level. It is written and directed by Scott Hansen and Desiree Connell. While an official release date has not yet been announced, we're hearing that Bad Candy will arrive this fall, just in time for Halloween. And of course, you can read more about all of those stories right now at HalloweenDailyNews.com. All right, our big news this week is that I interviewed James Jude Courtney again this week. We had a wide-ranging, epic conversation about how his life has changed since he first played Michael Myers in Halloween 2018 about putting the mask back on for Halloween Kills, just a little bit about Halloween Ends, and much more. Now, part one of the interview is going to premiere next week right here on the Halloween Daily News YouTube channel, but I wanted to give you guys a preview. So right now, here for the first time, is an exclusive sneak peek at the first few moments of my new interview with James Jude Courtney. Thank you very much for talking to me again today. It is great to see you. And uh, and I just want to uh, start off asking, how are you and, and how have you been? And in the last 12 months or so, it's been a crazy time for everybody. So so how are you doing, man? 
Uh, I'm doing great. It's really great to see you. It's really great to connect again. And, uh, and especially, uh, especially since we, um, you know, we, we, we headed off on the very first introduction, to, you know, back in 2018. I mean, it was, it's a special man. So yeah, thanks, man. I, um, I, I, um, it's, you know, the pandemic has been tough for everybody. And, you know, so for me, it's, sh it's shut down conventions, shut down. We were supposed to shoot Halloween kills. I mean, Halloween ends, Halloween kills was going to come out in October of 2020, everything up, you know, put on hold. Um, but I find, you know, in my career, I've been injured more than a few times. And um, I have discovered that when I'm, you know, when I'm injured or I'm incapacitated in some way, the universe is saying, dude, sit down, shut up and pay attention. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've used this opportunity to, um, to clean closets, you know, both emotional, you know, spiritual and, and, and sure. I'll go through my house and clean out stuff that I didn't want. And um, so there's been a real opportunity here to do some soul searching and growing. And, and, um, and, and also I think what it does, and I hope it does this for everybody is, uh, you know, has made me appreciate, you know, the beautiful things I do have in my life. Um, because, you know, I mean, we are, no matter how much we struggle in this country, we are truly, truly blessed to be here to, you know, even at its worst, you know, we have it so much better than other people. And so, sure. uh, you know, around the world. And, and so I think, you know, gratitude attitude through this pandemic and, you know, the ability to reach out and help other people, um, you know, the, to, to realize that we're all one, you know, as a human race, a human species, that we're one country, that our communities are one community. And so I've seen a lot of giving. I've been a part of a lot of giving, a lot of helping, you know, so it's, it's, it's not been lost. Uh, it's not been lost time, not by any means. Yeah. 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 I agree. I agree. It's definitely, um, and I think that's one of, one of the positives that did come out of everything last year is, um, and in the past 12 months is still going on, but, but like you said, a new appreciation for some of the things that I think a lot of us probably have taken for granted for too long. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I think, um, you know, cause when, when Ryan Freeman uh, at Trankus and uh, Ryan Turek from Blumhouse called me and we talked about, you know, like, Hey, we're thinking of, you know, postponing the release of Halloween kills until yeah. 2021. And, you know, my first response was guys, I'm, I'm 100% behind it. First of all, we don't want to jeopardize the fans and we know the fans love the, there were so many fans who would love the film. Sure. And they'd go, you know, damn the torpedoes, I'm going into the theater. And, and you know, we just didn't know enough about the, about the virus then. So, you know, we, as we talked about it, um, I mean, we, we have such a love affair with, with the fan base. And so the last thing in the world we want to do is jeopardize the health and well-being of, of the people we love. And, yeah. you know, and then we said, you know, as we looked at it, it's like, you know, so we have to wait a year. I mean, the anticipation will build. We know we made a damn good movie. I mean, yeah. it's just a damn good movie. So it's going to be worth the wait, you know. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, you know, fans, a lot of fans disappointed in the delay. But I don't think, um, I mean, I certainly wasn't surprised when the announcement came. And um, and I think a lot of, you know, it's, it's just added to the excitement at this point. I think um, this year is going to be um, just a monumental year when it does come out. Um, before, before we uh, get more into... Uh, Halloween and one thing I, I reread our, our interview it's been almost exactly three years since our, our first uh, conversation in 2018 and uh, you had y'all had pretty much just wrapped just a few weeks um, um, prior to that and um, and then your life has really I think kind of been a roller coaster since then um, after 2018 after our interview in October the next time, when we met face-to-face uh, -face for the first time was in Pasadena at the 40 Years of Terror convention. And then you spent the next year traveling the world, uh, making convention appearances and, and meeting fans. And um, so I definitely want to, to catch up on some of that. But one thing going back, because we talked about your career and, and everything, but one thing I, I didn't ask, in our first interview, not related to the Halloween franchise, but the holiday itself was, did you celebrate Halloween as a kid at all? Were you big into that or, or, or did you celebrate as a kid, the holiday itself, I mean? Well, yeah, man, I mean, I mean, it's, you know, think of the age I grew up in. I was born in 1957, so in the early 1960s, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, I lived in a classic suburban neighborhood and, and, um, and, 
and it was a safe neighborhood and kids yeah. could roam the streets right. safely back then. And so the neighborhood was packed with kids trick or treating. And, you know, and, and so, yeah, Halloween was a, was a huge, huge thing for us. And, and, you know, I have, I have a big family, I have six brothers. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we, um, you know, my mom has always been very active with the kids and helping us make costumes. And I mean, we didn't buy them. We made them, she made them, she, but she made her own dresses and she made, you know, she made clothes. She's a, you know, very talented woman. And um, so, yeah, it was huge. It was, it was a huge, huge thing for us. And, and, and I think as I had shared with you, um, my dad, um, you know, we had this classic sort of Saturday night or Friday nights. We used to watch a guy named Gulardi who, who did horror films. And, and my dad would say, he was a big dude. He'd sit with his big old arms you know, around <laughs> us. You know, we'd sit in front of the yeah. couch, on the couch, in front of the couch, and watch the classic, classic universal horror films. And so, yeah, you know, I mean, Halloween definitely was, you know, something deep, deeply, you know, ensconced in our, in our family experience. Awesome. Awesome. And, and Sue always asks everybody that we interview, uh, what is your favorite or was your favorite Halloween candy? Do you, do you have a favorite Halloween candy or just candy in general, general, I guess, but it, it all goes back to Halloween. Yeah. You know, man, gosh, it's been so long and I've been, hitting <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, I, you know, it's, I, I'll have to think about that. <laughs> But I remember, you know, I do remember because we'd all get there, we'd dump out our bags and, oh, yeah. then, and you know, we'd separate things and we were <laughs> yeah. only allowed to eat a little bit that night. Oh, yeah. Couldn't, couldn't OD on it at, at that night. Yep. Yeah. My mom didn't want like wild, you know, wild maniacs running around the house. And, <laughs> right. and honestly, you know, when we were growing up, um, we weren't allowed to have sugar. We were allowed to have sodas on Sundays. Like after yeah. after church, my dad would go get a you know big big mound of chipped ham and Swiss cheese and makes these oh, wow. you know these hot sandwiches. And we got to mm -hmm. drink root beer. But the rest of the week, we never drank sodas. We didn't get candy. We had my mom made pies and cakes, but they were very low sugar. Like oh, okay. she was always really really about you know keeping us healthy and strong. So Halloween was really special because it was really that and Easter were the only times we got candy, man. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, I, I I have to think about my favorite, though, because, <laughs> you know, all were so doggone good. And that's just the beginning. Like I said, you can see all of the first installment of my interview with James Jude Courtney premiering right here on the Halloween Daily News YouTube channel next week. Until then, I'm Matt Arts for Halloween Daily News. Thank you for watching.